Hey guys, this is Zonal Fear here, bringing you another video today about uh, PCs in general. One of the common things that I hear quite a lot about PC gaming is that it's really expensive to get into. And what I want to do today is show you that actually that is not the case. I recently built a PC which um, should be more than adequate enough for gamers who are on a very specific sort of tight budget. What I want to do is show you the components of that PC and uh, you know just overall my general impressions of how this PC performs the pros and cons of having a rig like this and uh, you know eventually I'll sort of break down the price for you as well. So let's start. What I selected for this particular uh, PC was an AMD based build. Let's get it out of the way straight away. AMD CPUs cannot compete with Intel processors in terms of raw performance. However, what AMD give you is value for money and to boot, um, if you're on a strict budget, the AMD processors will be more than good enough for what you're looking for use. In this case, I've gone for a Socket FM1 processor, which is the A6-3670K APU on the FM1 socket. It's at 2.7 GHz and is a black edition, which I'll go a little bit into more as the video progresses. So this is a quad-core processor from AMD on the FM1 socket. This is just a generic sort of 18mm fan. Uh, cases could use more than one of these things. And uh, you know it's quite cheap and it does exactly what it says on the tin, so I won't go into too much detail about this. The memory, which I've already built this PC, so it's actually not there, but the memory that I selected for this particular build was the uh, Corsair Value Select memory, which is DDR3 memory, 4GB. And this will set you back around £15. Even better, it comes with a lifetime warranty from Corsair. So, as well as being uh, made by Corsair, which you know is a quality product in the first place, it's also backed up by a lifetime warranty from them as well. This will set you back around £15. For the motherboard, I've gone for the Gigabyte A55M slash DS2 FM1 socket motherboard. This is a good motherboard that has quite a few you know, sort of neat little features, including overclocking. And a motherboard like this, uh, this is a micro ATX size. A motherboard like this will cost you around 35 to 40 quid depending on where you shop. And that's for our processor itself. And finally, for the power supply, which um, I'll say now, if you're thinking of gaming on a PC, never skimp out on the power supply. The power supply is one of the most critical components of your PC, and you'd be doing your PC a disservice if you bought a sort of cheap and nasty power supply. What I've gone here is for the OCZ Technology Core Extreme power supply, which is a 500 watt power supply. I've used these power supplies in the past, they're nice power supplies, they don't break the bank and they'll run most mid to high range cards as well. You can pick this up for around sort of 35 quid, you know, but again sort of look, you know, look online to see where you're actually uh, you know, looking for with the prices. So over to the build itself. I've already built this now. Um, the cable management isn't fantastic, so I do apologize in advance. There are a couple of components that I didn't sort of cover there which is the hard drive, which is here, which is a Samsung one terabyte hard drive. It's a 5400 RPM hard drive, and thankfully prices of hard drives are now coming down. This hard drive will set you back around 50 quid for a one terabyte hard drive. If you don't need a terabyte of storage space, or you already have a hard drive that you can reuse, a SATA hard drive that you can reuse, then you can save more money even on that. Here's the power supply I was mentioning, the Core Extreme power supply, 500 watt power supply. Again in the PC, it comes with a nice little fan at the bottom here. I've used these power supplies in the past and I find them you know, absolutely fantastic for the price that they cost. What you'll also need is a sort of generic DVD rewrite drive, which is here. I'm aware you can't see it properly, my apologies. But these components are really, really cheap. Uh, for this drive, you're looking between 10 and 12 pound. Here we have the sort of uh, heatsink fan for the AMD CPU. It's not fantastic, um, but it does the job if you're, you know, sort of running your, your processor at stock, you know, uh, stock clocks. Here we have the 18mm fan I was talking about earlier. It does exactly what it says in the tin, plugged into the chassis a little lower. So I have built this rig. Um, just there's the uh, sort of memory down there as well towards the right hand side. So I built this rig with a budget in mind. Uh, this is a 
a budget rig that will set you back, including windows, around 310 to 320 pounds. You may be able to get it cheaper since AMD have recently released the FM2 socket processors. So you may find a really good deal on socket FM1 right now. But I went for that specific budget. Now, what this rig will do is as it's a quad core, it'll perform nicely and perform adequately despite the fact that it's not an Intel processor, it'll do very, very nicely. The onboard Radeon 6530D graphics perform quite well at the lower scale uh, resolutions. But if you're looking to sort of do 1080p gaming, then you're going to want something a little more serious than the uh, 6530D that's included on board. On the motherboard, you can see that it actually has space for a PCI Express graphics card here. And this is what I would recommend you look into investing in. If you're looking to sort of make use of the onboard graphics of the A6, then you can crossfire it with a card up to a Radeon. 6, HD 6670 and what that will do is that will combine the power of both your onboard graphics and a dedicated graphics card here. Now with the 6670 you're probably looking at spending another 50 quid um, on the 6670 itself but it is an incredible boost in performance even for such a sort of lowish end uh, graphics card. The HD 6670 has um, around the performance of an old 8800 GT. So while it's nice and, you know, while it's a quite a cheap card, having recently only just got rid of my 8800 GT, I can tell you that uh, it was more than adequate for games where you're not playing at a higher resolution of more than, say, 900p. The power supply, um, which I sort of kind of went into earlier a little bit, the power supply, if you do decide to ded uh, add a dedicated graphics card, comes with not one, but two PCI Express six pin uh, connectors. So there's the first, and there's the second, which is fantastic if you're looking at getting something more high end than a 6670. Bear in mind that any sort of uh, dedicated graphics cards um, will add to the initial price of this build that I've made here. What this build will do is it will. Um, with a dedicated graphics card, it should be able to run uh, you know, a lot of PC games very easily. The quad-core A6 processor is based on the AMD Athlon series processors, which are nice, you know, sort of solid performing processors, if not exactly something amazingly special. As it's the K edition of the AMD APU, you can actually overclock this CPU um, from 2.7 gigahertz onwards. However, if you were actually going to do that, I'd strongly recommend using a, a proper aftermarket cooler. You're not going to be doing very well on this stock cooler here, as it's not fantastic. It keeps the processor's temperatures down at stock clocks. It will be no good if you're actually looking to overclock the processor, which it's, the processor itself is kind of asking for, as it's the K model, um, because the extra heat generation, this thing will not be able to dissipate. You will need some dedicated, you know, an aftermarket cooler to actually handle any sort of overclocking um, on this processor. It also has, uh, you know, sort of the usual SATA connectors here. One thing to mention is if you already have an existing PC which has like a, you know, SATA drive, uh, SATA DVD drive, you could always reuse that in any build that you made. And the same goes for your hard drive. You could always reuse your hard drive in your new build as well if it if it's SATA. And this will keep your prices even lower. This PC actually has Windows 7 64 uh, bit installed on it and it, uh, it performs really well. I've had it sort of running a couple of games on the onboard HD uh, 6530D and at 720p the performance, considering it's an integrated chip, is actually really good. Um, if I was you know, serious about gaming I'd want something with a little more oomph but for an on, you know, an onboard chip, it is really good performance. You know, I'm pleasantly surprised by how well these APUs actually perform in games. Again, though, if you're looking to do serious gaming, you're going to want to add a dedicated graphics card into your PC. At, you know, at some point, you know, you can't just rely on the onboard integrated graphics because while it it doesn't do too bad at 720p, any higher resolution, and it's really going to struggle. One of the other things to note as well about uh, using uh, crossfire on the 
FM1 series. I'm not sure if, if it's like that for the FM2 series. But the in Crossfire, the FM1 series processors uh, do not uh, use Crossfire technology in DX9 games. So if you play a lot of DX9 games, which uh, most games today still come out in DX9, then it won't Crossfire and you won't get any additional performance boost if you use a HD6670. What I suggest is using something along the lines of, at the very least, a, a Radeon HD7770 or 6770, you know, cards of that series, or a GeForce 550 Ti. And what that will do is that, that should go rather nicely with this processor actually. The processor will be able to feed it enough and the graphics card itself doesn't consume a huge amount of power and is quite well performing for what it is. You can pick up the H, uh, HD 6770s for around 70 quid if you can find them. You can pick up the 550 Ti's for around sort of 82 pound again if you can find them. If you can't find them then look for the next generation upwards so it'd be 650 Ti or 7770. The 7770 uh, from AMD is around £100 and that would be a really sort of good card to pair up with this. All in all, all with without the dedicated graphics card you could build this PC for around the sort of 310, 320, 330 mark. That's with Windows 7. An extra graphics card, a dedicated graphics card would cost you depending on how you wanted to tackle it, whether you wanted to go across Fire X, it'd be, you know, between 360 to 390 pound with Windows. Um, for a dedicated graphics card like the GTX 550 Ti, that would set you back between 380 and 410 pounds. Again, all in with Windows. You can build a decent PC for, you know, less than uh, 300, you know, well, for less than 330 quid with onboard graphics or you know for 420 quid with a dedicated graphics card so whoever says PC game is expensive it isn't this PC will perform very admirably for the games that you want to uh, you know that you want to run on it it should do most games perhaps even at 1080p depending on your graphics settings on whatever dedicated graphics card you have it won't do 1080p on the onboard graphics it's just not good enough for that but for any dedicated graphics card it should perform very, very nicely. One final thing to note as well is that if you're planning on sticking with the onboard graphics, which you know for sort of low, really low resolutions is fine, the faster the memory you buy, the better your onboard graphics actually performs. The, the onboard graphics uses your memory um, to actually sort of you know use as a like a memory buffer. And at the moment I have DDR3 1333 in here. However, you can get a good sort of 10-15% by using, uh, you know, memory like DDR3 1600 or even DDR3 1866. The higher your memory um, speed is, the better the onboard GPU will perform. So for sort of the best performance looking at DDR3 1600 or higher memory for these APUs, if you're on going to be running a dedicated graphics card setup, then that's not really as much of an issue. You can just stick to 1333 memory, as you know, you probably won't be using the sort of uh, onboard graphics that this process provides. What I also may do in the future is I also may upload a couple of videos from this rig here to show you how well it performs. I've had it running games, and it does it nicely, if not incredibly, on the dedic on the onboard card. And uh, maybe I'll upload you know some of them if. Uh, if you guys are interested. So I'd like to thank all you guys for watching and listening again. I hope I've given you some good ideas for a gaming PC. As always, shop around for your components. You know, the best you know, best way to save yourself even more money is to take a look at different stores. Don't shop at the same store or just go to one place and think, yeah, I'll buy it from there. AMD recently released the FM2 socket processors. So these FM1 socket processors should be going down even further in price. What I'll do is uh, I'll sort of, you know, when I get around to editing this video, I'll put the uh, you know, uh, cost of all the components here, so you can see what you, you know what the total cost is around. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Take care.